Katie Reyes from Branson International Film Festival. And I am so excited to be able to interview Isaac Hernandez today, um, all the way from Tejas. Is that how you would say it? <laughs> yes, Tejas. 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 Yes. So um, I have the honor of meeting you a couple of years ago and then mm -hmm. um, got to um, see you again at our festival uh, for this year, 2021. And I do have a little question. Are you planning on being with us for 2022? No, I figured one year was good enough. No, of course <laughs> I am. Absolutely. Well, we're, we kind of kind of um, think of you as a staple. Um, for our um, film festival. We're always honored to have you there. Um, I think this last year was great um, when you set up and had the interview. So I'm hope hopefully that was mutually beneficial um, mm -hmm. for you as well. Um, and I know that um, the folks that were there really enjoyed um, being able to meet you and, you know, network with you as well. Um, so great. I, you know, we would love to keep that tradition going. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. So um, I just want to give a little bit of introduction for those who may not know uh, much about Isaac Hernandez. Um, you are an actor and writer. Uh, you're known for Faith on Film, um, which you've been doing for the last few years and have had guests such as Dallas Jenkins, Bruce Marciano, Tina Gallo, Candace Kirkpatrick, Kevin and Sam Sorbo, and the list goes on and on and on. I see them all the time on Facebook. Um, and you have been in the industry longer than a few years, though. So tell us about you. Tell us about Isaac Hernandez and kind of your journey in this industry. Well, I, you mentioned right off the top actor. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate that would be because I've never really acted in movies. When I was a kid, I acted in, uh, in, in some stage plays. But I have always wanted to be an actor, but uh, it just, at least it hasn't, hasn't been in the cards up until now. Hopefully it, uh, it will be soon. Uh, there is a, a gentleman that wants to produce a movie and have me be one of the actors in it. So I look nice. forward to it because I always did want to do that. It's just that uh, when I was a kid, my dad, uh, I, I got an audition. I actually got an, act, uh, an agent and he got me an audition at Paramount Studios. And when we went to uh, to the audition, my dad just, uh, you know, my dad took me. I was only about, I'm going to say maybe, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. And my dad took me. And when we went into the, the room where everybody was at, he just didn't like what he saw. I was raised in a very traditional Christian home. And he didn't like what he, I guess, considered the element of what was there. Uh, and so he said, no, nope, this is not for you. And we turned around and left. I was so disappointed. I was oh, so, yeah. oh my gosh, I just was so looking forward to doing this. But, uh, I, you know, I think it was God's plan that he had something for me that was different than that. Uh, I ended up, you know, in Christian media uh, for pretty much all my life now. Uh, but I'm kind of looking forward to maybe reviving that a little bit. Uh, so that's, that's my acting story. Um, yes. Other than that, other than that um, yeah, I, I believe that, uh, you know, what I've been doing for my entire, oh, 40, almost 50 years of my life, I guess, uh, has been in a, in a journey of being, uh, being very heavily involved in the Christian media world. Most of it in television. I worked for uh, really the largest Christian network uh, in the, you know, in the world that there is, I was Trinity Broadcasting Network for, uh, oh my goodness, well over 25 years. Um, and other than that, I've pretty much stuck to Christian uh, media. So I, I know I, it was God. Yes, for sure. And um, so you've been to our festival since year mm -hmm. one. And what's something that you've noticed that has happened over the years um, for the Branson Film Festival? Well, I have noticed uh, there definitely has been growth, hasn't been a humongous growth, but there has been steady growth on it. And I do notice that there's a lot of great films that come through. So I haven't seen a lot of people come and come uh, to the festival. It's, it's still kind of in that smaller stage, which kind of makes it good, though, because you really do get to connect with people at a very right. personal level. Uh, but the, the films that are coming in are, are really quite amazing. And they're coming in from all over the world. 
Um, some people actually did come from all over the world. I remember these folks from Greece that, yes. that came into the, the year before. Um, but I have I have noticed uh, just the quality of films really begin to you know to rise in, in some of the films that are that come through the festival. Yes. Uh, and I, and like you said, I think that people um, appreciate the intimacy as well um, at the film festival. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I I've, I've heard comments about that too. Is that you yeah. know that that intimacy and really being able to connect with people. Correct. Um, and so that's one of our goals. You know, mm -hmm. of course, for the film festival is education, but also being um, that connection. Um, mm -hmm. for people so having that venue for that connection so yeah so and there really is a, there really is value in that because I know the on this last uh, the, this one that I was at the last year um, I, I I had the privilege of, uh, of being one of the keynote speakers on one of the one of the sessions um, and out of that came the possibility that I will be directing my first feature film uh, this coming year Wow. So there was, yeah, there was huge value on it. I, I yes. spoke, these ladies, these ladies heard me and I don't know what I said, but something, something touched them, something impressed, impressed them. And they said, we want to, to do this for you. So definitely. Nice. Uh, yep. Yeah. So are you keeping that a secret? Cause I don't think well, I know about that. <laughs> Maybe Deborah knows, but I don't know about um, that. No, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not good at secrets. I'd like to just share <laughs> everything. So I, I won't say what film or who maybe but it's coming so yes <laughs> awesome so that is moving forward that's moving forward so far yes yes perfect that's, about it. that's we amazing should be if everything goes uh, to plan here we should be probably in production uh, i don't know maybe the spring of next year amazing. that's awesome so i know um for you uh we have a personal connection um from California and mm -hmm. um so you moved last year I think it was or is it this year earlier this year uh this year this year right around yeah. March from California to Texas so how is it being a Texan I love <laughs> it I love it here um you know I'm outside of seven years that I lived in New York and that was when I was like in my 20s uh, a long time ago um, I've lived in California all my life, you know, right. grew up there. And, uh, and so to suddenly have such a drastic change, never did I think I would be coming to Texas. That was never something like, oh, one day I think I want to go to Texas. But I came July a year ago to bring my son. He moved here. And when I got here, I just fell in love with the place. And I said, I got to move here. Um, so it took me a few more months, but I was able to move over here. And it, I just, I'm, it's so peaceful to me. I don't know why. It's very, uh, very um, uh, country where I live. In fact, my neighbors, and I say this whenever I get interviewed, is that my neighbors are cattle. I mean, I, I'm neighboring a cattle ranch. So I have these cows that come over to my, uh, you know, basically to my backyard. And there's something about them that just seems to bring a lot of peace to me. Yeah, that's I awesome. Love so much. And uh, you had you uh, celebrated an a wedding anniversary yesterday. So <laughs> happy anniversary to you and your wife. And how many Thank years? You. It's forty two years yesterday, and it's been the best seven years of my life. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> they've all been wonderful. They've all been wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, so, how is she adjusting from California to Texas? Uh, she adjusted very well. Uh, I, I won't say that she is as much in love with it as I am because I'm just blown away of the, of the air. I mean, I, I just can't even say enough how, how thrilled I am to be here. She's happy here. She likes it. She loves the cows too, uh, which was, at first was like, wait a minute. When she saw a picture, she goes, there's cows next to our house. Oh, she thought that was a terrible thing. You know, she's loving it. So yes, yeah, she's, she's doing fine. Uh, of course, okay. remember that our, our son came here first, then I came. Our daughter followed us like two months later, so she's living here as well. And I've got my my other daughter who already sent her kids here, so they're uh, they're living with us right now until they move. Probably within another three four months, they should be here. Right, right. Well, congratulations, and I know Thank you. Um, you had your one of your grandsons with you at the festival this last I year. Did. Yeah. And so I got to kind of drive him around a little bit. And, That's and right. 
show him some of Branson. So that was a lot of fun. So. Yeah, he's a awesome. good kid. He, he's taking, uh, he's in school right now. The, the, the high school that they go to is very much into um, the, the um, you know, c- careers type of a thing. And so they have like mechanics class and, you know, nursing and all kinds of stuff. And they have a theatrical, uh, uh, you know, class too that he's, that he's taking. He's taking theater. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm he. I'm hoping that he really grabs onto that. Well, I, that's what I was going to say. So you've been in this industry for so long. Did any of your children or grandchildren ever have any of that interest in what you the, do? The only one from my children, now my daughter, my oldest daughter had interest mostly in helping me. So she didn't really get interested in the, uh, in the career itself as much as it's just that she wanted to help me. So yeah. she did work with me for a while, but she, I wouldn't say she's in the industry. Uh, my other daughter, none at all. My son did and actually uh, became a cameraman for a while, uh, started to work uh, at Trinity Broadcasting a bit, and even did a few shows in Hollywood because I have a brother, my youngest brother, who is who works in Hollywood. He works on The Voice and a bunch of other you know shows, and so he got uh-huh. him in there. So the opportunity was great for him, but it just wasn't, um, how would I say, he didn't feel that that was his calling, and he felt very much called to join the military so he ended up joining the military he, he spent seven years uh as an army ranger uh came back tried to go back into media uh, as a camera operator but was rather bored because he experienced some right. very serious stuff and now you know sitting behind a camera just didn't feel exciting enough for him so uh so no none of my kids are in the business per se uh, as far as my grandkids Mm, not really i mean they they've they've done it to help me out but no i haven't seen somebody yet go wow this is what i want to do right i'm still hoping yeah well maybe your grandson we'll see i hope so yeah so. so if you could pinpoint one area that all filmmakers could improve on what do you think it would be Ooh, uh there's there really is so many uh, that maybe one filmmaker has everything, but one thing, another filmmaker right. has other things, you know. Uh, but in terms of low budget type films, which most faith based films are, uh, some of the, the areas where they, well, I'm going to say the biggest area where they tend to lack is actually in the script, in, in the story. Uh, it, there, just, there just isn't enough, there doesn't seem to be enough meat in the story. Um, and so that, to me, would be one of the biggest improvements. Uh, there are there quality issues, yeah, of course, because of budgets. They, you know, right. sometimes they might not have the best of gear. <clears throat> they might not have the, enough money for good uh, post production. So coloring may not be right. You know, perfect audio. So there's a lot of things. But to me, one of the things that probably would be most important is to the get story. those scripts to be a little bit more. Um, uh, I, I don't even know what the word would be, but the, just to, to improve on the scripting, I think. Right. Especially right. dialogue. Dialogue seems to be very difficult, and I don't even know what it is. I'm not a screenwriter, so I have no idea. But I know that when I'm hearing it or when I'm when I'm reading it, I can tell which which ones would really grab me, you know, with the dialogue and which ones don't. Right. And we had some of that at the um, film festival this last year, uh, where we had script writers, and I think that. Everybody really enjoyed that part mm-hmm. of it, of, of the film festival this year. Right. So I'm hoping that we're going to include that um, for next year as well, um, because I think that even just the general audience liked hearing about people's story concepts um, and, yeah. you know, where they could go with that. So, yeah, because uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people say that Christian movies are cheesy. Um what makes them cheesy? I don't even think it's the, the technical quality. For the most part, it's probably the story. And again, the, the script writing, the dialogue of, of how they talk, things like that. I think that's what sometimes makes it feel cheesy. Yeah. And I think that, you know, uh, people are broadening out into maybe a different genre of faith family films. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that the message of the faith is not so much in the forefront, but just kind of in the body of the whole project itself. But the genres are different, like a sci-fi or, you know, they're looking at different genres, still keeping it 
a, you know, a faith family film, but uh, different genres. So that doesn't have that cheesy, like you that, said. That, that's true. And, you know, a lot of times people think that if it's a faith film, it has to be family. Yeah. And that's not really the case. I mean, you could have a faith film that's only intended for a more mature audience. And I think yes. that's one of the problems is they try to make it so that the kids can come watch it as well. And so therefore uh, it, it doesn't have that, it doesn't Damn. have that edginess perhaps, uh, you know, right. I, at, at this specific, by the way, at the first Branson Film Festival was where I first made the comment that maybe some, uh, some producers might want to consider starting to make. And I said this word, I said, Christian horror films. Right. And uh, believe me, uh, people were looking at me like I was, you know, I was going <laughs> to send straight to hell. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but uh, it kind of caught on because I, I mentioned it again at another crim, another film festival and a, and a gentleman came up and he said, man, I'm glad you're saying that because I just finished a Christian zombie film. <laughs> and uh, so I said, you got to send it to me so I can look at it. And, you know, it, I, I'm not into zombie films, but I right. can see, first of all, the message. It wasn't there was a Christian message, but right. it was encapsulated in this zombie film. Uh, and I think more and more people are starting to make those kind of films, which are going to attract a different audience than exactly. the, mom, the mom and the grandma, who are the ones that bring normally the, the films into the, the household for the whole family to watch. But right. some, the whole family says, that's not really what I want to watch. So I'm glad right. people are starting to you know, get out there with that. Yeah, exactly. And and like you said, that is going to bring the gospel message to right. a totally different audience who wouldn't normally. And exactly. especially if it's not, you know, labeled as a Christian film, it's just a horror film or a zombie film. But then they go and they hear the message, you know, of salvation yeah. and yeah, it not true. really labeled you know, as a Christian film. So um, I, I, I look forward to those kinds of things um, in the future as well. I mean, I'm not a horror flick, you know, genre person either. Um, but I think that, you know, it's going to uh, meet uh, an audience that I wouldn't normally yeah. meet. So I think By that, the way, that's good. The, the film that I, my, my first feature film that I will be directing is a thriller. Nice. And I like thriller, mm -hmm. uh, mystery, but horror, not so yeah, much. Yeah, it's not horror. This, this one is thriller, uh, yeah. suspense and stuff. Yes. Uh, but you know what? I did see a film that a friend of mine uh, wrote, came out several years ago, uh, which was a rapture film, but it was more on a horror genre. And I absolutely loved it. It, it was, it has, it's again a rapture film. It's called The Remaining. Uh, so if you guys haven't seen that, you might want to check that out. The remaining, it does have a bit of a horror style, but it's okay. It's about the, the remaining, the remaining. Okay. We'll check it out. Everybody Scary. check that out. The remaining. And then, um, we would like everyone of course, to, um, subscribe to your YouTube page and check out some of the interviews that you've done over the years. Um, and where else can they follow your work? Well, of course, that means they can follow me on Facebook, uh, on Faith on Film TV. So if they go to Facebook. I mean, that, they can follow me personally, but you know you, how you have that maximum of 5,000 you know, people that can yes. follow you. So I keep reaching it. And then I'll try to, you know, kind of, I hate to say get rid of, but I, I try to right. purge it a little bit. <laughs> we uh, so well. that maybe new ones can come in, but they come in as fast as I purge. But if they go to Faith on Film TV on, on Facebook, then that, that's, on, that's limitless. So they can okay. certainly like that and follow me there. Uh, but definitely the YouTube channel, uh, if they go there and look for Faith on Film TV, it'd be great if they subscribe to that. I'm about yes. to reach show number 100. I'm about nice. to so I've done a lot. And by the way, I'll go ahead and, and let this out. Show number one was with Nancy Stafford. Okay. Um, when I, when I uh, said I was going to do the show, she called me up and she said, I want to be your first guest. So she was my first guest. Well, guess what? She's going to be my 100th guest. But nice. she'll be on one in 100. If you go to YouTube, you can check out her first show, and then uh, in another, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks or so, uh, you'll see show number 100. Isaac, we really appreciate you coming on with us today. Uh, and it's my pleasure. Giving us a little update, and then of course we look forward to seeing you um, April of next year. I'll be there. All right, thank you. All righty.